Hey microflukes, so we're continuing our lab videos for chapter 10 microbial growth. We've just started exploring our selective and differential media. Um, the previous video we talked about the enrichment um, and differential media blood auger. So with this video, folks, we're going to talk about selective differential media called McConkie's auger. And this is going to be selective for a big group of gram-negative bacteria that can live in our intestinal tract. The family name is Enterobacteriaceae, and this includes good old E. coli and a number of other gram-negative bacteria we work with in our lab. And then we'll see not only will McConkie select for those gram-negative enteric bacteria, but it's also differential. We can distinguish between different groups of enterobacteria, enterobacteriaceae based on their ability to ferment lactose. Okay. So again, I've got this great um, printout that Dr. Holland found. And again, folks, we'll, I will have a PowerPoint, so these images will be easier to see on the PowerPoint. So um, first of all, we want to know the ingredients in McConkie's media. Why is it selective for Enterobacteriaceae? So when we say it's selective, that means we're going to permit the growth of Enterobacteriaceae and we're going to inhibit the growth of, of other uh, bacteria. So we'll inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria. We'll inhibit the growth of gram-negative bacteria that haven't evolved to live in the intestinal tract. So the inhibitors we're going to put into our McConkie's media will be bile salts, and that's going to help inhibit microbes that haven't evolved to live in the intestinal tract where bile will be present. And the other inhibitor will be crystal violet, and crystal violet is going to inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria. So with those inhibitors on board, then, oh, oops, oops. Oh, that was good, folks. So what happened there was, you might recall from a pre previous video, we're running our um, airborne microbe experiment. So that was my 30-minute timer. So I'm going to put my plates on my 30-minute TSA plate and my 30-minute Sabro's dextrose plate. And now I'm going to reset the timer for another 30 minutes so I can um, make sure I've exposed my 60-minute plates for a total of 60 minutes. Okay? All right. So we said McConkie's is going to select for the growth of gram-negative enterobacteriaceae. Sometimes they're simply called gram-negative enterics. And enterics include um, E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia. Your, believe it or not, Yersinia pestis belongs to this family. Um, Serratia, Klebsiella, Enterobacter. It's a huge family. And many of these Enterobacteriaceae can be pathogens. So, for example, Salmonella and Shigella, those are pathogens. Um, and indeed, folks, even when we think about E. coli, we think of E. coli as being a good guy, right? Being a beneficial member of our intestinal microbiome. But there are so many different strains of E. coli. Most of them are, you know, not harmful, but some of them carry really powerful um, toxin genes um, that we'll be talking about. So for example, we'll be talking about the shiga toxin producing E. coli. Um, so it is important, for example, if we maybe have a food sample or a sample of feces that we can try to distinguish between different types of the Enterobacteriaceae. And the way we're going to do that, we're going differentiate, to differentiate them based on lactose fermentation. So the only sugar in McConkie's auger is lactose, the milk sugar made up of glucose and galactose. If the microbes can ferment the lactose, they're going to make acids and the pH will decrease. So the way we're going to detect that um, decrease in pH, that acidic pH, is included in the McConkie's medium is a pH indicator called neutral red. So neutral red will be red. Um, um, at acidic pH, and it will basically be, be colorless um, um, under alkaline conditions. Do I have a picture here? Right, okay. So what will happen, folks, if we have, say, Enterobacteriaceae that can grow on the McConkies and ferment lactose, we're going to get this beautiful pink color, okay, showing that we've had acids produced. I'm not sure if you can see that. Okay, so a pink color to the medium and to the colonies after incubation would indicate lactose fermentation. So we call those lac positive microbes. And two example of lac positive lactose fermenting Enterobacteriaceae would be our good friend E. coli. 
and then its close cousin Enterobacter orogeny. So these two guys can both ferment lactose. Now in contrast, we had mentioned Salmonella and Shigella. Um, Salmonella and Shigella can't ferment lactose. So what they'd have to do is in the medium, since they can't use a the lactose, they have to start tearing apart proteins and amino acids. And when they start tearing apart the amino acids, they release the amino group as ammonia. And that we know is a weak base. It's going to bind hydrogen ions. The pH will go up. The medium becomes alkaline. And at alkaline pH, neutral red is colorless. So this colorless medium is telling us lactose was not fermented. So these would be considered lac negatives. So here we have another Enterobacteriaceae called Proteus that's lac ne negative. Here's Salmonella. It's lac negative. Um, another enteric uh, pathogen. Um, Shigella would be lac negative. So it's really helpful just being able to break that big group of Enterobacteriaceae into the lac positives that can ferment lactose and the lac negatives that can't ferment lactose. Okay, so we're going to stop here. Sorry, you guys, it was still recording.